Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Logic Ops Lab. Today we're going to talk about arrays. So first of all, we should understand that there is we do not have any kind of uh, specifically array design in batch scripting, but we can surely implement them. So let's under understand arrays. So an array is a collection of data items, or or you can say same type of items accessed using a common name. So whenever you create an array, make sure that all the items are of same type. We are going to use two methods to create arrays over here. First, use set command to define each element of an array, and second, to iterate the values used for uh, using for loop. So that's what we're gonna do over here. Set command is the command that is responsible for defining each element of an array. So if you can see over here, this is the syntax. So we are using that same set command, our array name at the zeroth index equal to one. So this value one is going to be assigned to the zeroth element of this array. So you can see here, here set is the command, a is the array name, zero is the index at which the value one is going to be assigned. Moving on, we'll have some kind of demo today. And in th that demo, we talk about array creation. How do we create an array? How do we access an array through index values? How will we modify the array? Uh, we'll add something or remove something, any element in the array and iteration using for loop. Today we are having a bonus script hands-on. So we'll calculate the length of an array. So let me tell you that we do not have any kind of function to calculate the length, but we are going to put some kind of logic to calculate that. In many languages, we do have that kind of function which calculates the length of the array just straight away. But here we do not have that. So we're going to make our own logic and let's see how we do it. So let's start with the first script today. So in the first script, we are trying to create an array. Uh, there are two ways to do it. We'll talk about the other way in the next script. So in this, we are setting the array with the values one till six. And in the next line, what we are doing is we are iterating the value of my array and doing a echo over here. So this is the for loop in which i is the iterator every time and it will iterate through each and every value over here. And then after that, it will just print it on the console. So let's run it 0, 1. And you can see it has printed all the values of the array. The other way to create or access is right in this format. ARR is your array name. The value inside the bar bracket is the index. And this is zeroth index, first, second, and third. And we are assigning some values like 10, 20, 30, and 40 in this array. So now I have an array which has four values till fourth index. Now we are just trying to print this. All we have to do is we have to just reference the name of the array and the index value which we are trying to print. We see less over here and we can just run it, hit a tab, enter. And you can see the first element, second element, third element. Here it should be fourth. Just type it again. Yeah, better. Let me just clean this and run it again. Now you can see the first, second, and third, fourth element all are printed, which we declared over here. Now let's move on to modify the element. We clean this. We are doing again same thing. We are setting up an array at the zeroth index. The value is ten, and we are printing that. What is the value? The first index we are giving twenty. In the second, we are giving thirty value. And now what we are doing is we are adding. Or modifying an element at the beginning of the array which is the zeroth element so the first value was there was 10 which is going to be printed over here and again we are assigning a value of 40 at the same place so now what we are going to see is let's see 0 3 hit a tab on your keyboard enter so the first element of f array is 10 and after assigning the value of 40 over here we are seeing the last element of the array is now 40. It should not be the last, it should be the first. Typo. So that's how it works, guys. I'll just run it again. 
for a better view. Let me just clean this. Okay, so the first element of the array is 10, the first element of the array is now 40. Okay, so this is how it's done, guys. Let's move on to the iteration part. So we have a we are trying to portray a string array over here, which is not exactly a string array, but it's just we are trying to portray it from 0th index till 5th, sorry, 6th index. We are just trying to assign some values in a form of a sentence. Welcome to logic of slab family guys. Okay. And just make sure that you notice this. These are the exclamation marks. And that we are giving the array name and the index. This is commented, but this is what we are using over here. Same for loop slash l i is the iterator. The first element is the place or the number from which the loop will start. It will go till 5 and 1 is the increment that will happen. So if I run it, what happens? Let us check 0, 4, hit a tab, enter and it will print welcome to logic ops lab family guys. Now make sure you notice this. So what is enable delete expansion? So delete expansion will cause variable within a batch file to be expanded at execution time rather than the parse time. So this option is turned on with using this set local. So the total command is set local enable delete expansion. So variable like expansion means uh, replacing a variable with its value. So if there is a variable like something like a percentage and then you have this percentage and you have some value over there. Uh, sorry you have something like a percentage uh, some text in the between and then percentage again with its value like uh, for an example let me explain you in such a way so if there is a value known as percentage my directory and then the actual value is c slash windows so this will replace this value in terms of this. So this is how it's done, guys. Not at the parse time, but at the uh, at the execution time. For generally, for simple commands, this will take uh, no time. I mean, you you won't notice any kind of change. But with loop commands like for or like bracketed expressions, delayed expansion will allow you to see the current value of the variable, and that's what we are doing over here. Let's move on to the length program or a script. Let me clean this. Now you can easily see over here that we are trying to set up a value at my r. The zeroth element is one, similarly second and third on the first and second. We are setting up a i over here uh, in which we are assigning value zero. We are giving my loop over here, which is a label and this label is getting called from this go to. Now what is happening inside? So let me run this first and then we'll talk about how it is working. So the length of the array is three, which is perfect, one, two, and three. Now, how is it running? So when the control comes over here, if defined, so defined is the keyword that you have to understand. So defined checks whether the, the next value defined after that is existing in the program or is defined in the program or not. Right now when i equal to 0 and it comes over here, what happens? My r i is equal to 0. So my r 0. So it will check whether this value exists in the program or not or defined in the script or not. Yes, it exists. It will go inside. Now set a, it will increase the value by 1. i plus equal to 1 equal to? It means that i equal to i plus 1. So i was 0. And then plus one, so it means i is now one. It will go to my loop again. Now it comes back again over here. Now what is the value of i? One. It will go again inside. The value over comes comes here over like one, and then it becomes my r bracket one. Is it defined? Yes, it is defined. It is defined over here. So the condition is again true. It goes inside. So until unless this becomes false, it won't come out of the loop, right? Again, it goes here, i equal to i plus 1, it becomes 2. It will make a call from go to to my loop. It goes to my loop and then it is defined. Yes, it is defined. 
and then it will come back again. Now this time I will become 3. It will go back again and it will check from here that if, if, if defined my r equal to 3. Is it defined? No, it's not defined. That's why it will print, it will come over again and it will become false and it will go over here and then it will print my value is 3. Now, if I would have made it like this, then the condition for the third one would have become true. So if I give a 3 over here and run it again, it will give me the count as 4 because my r3 is again defined now and so on. So I hope you guys have understood all these programs. If you haven't understood anything, please feel free to comment below and we'll address the issue. Thanks guys. Have a great time. Bye-bye.